I'm not going. That's it. Well, I'm going to Juan Bosch's house. Would you get dressed? I said I wasn't going. And you can't force me. Just the same way I can force you to do anything that you don't want to do. Fine. See you later. <laughs> Bosh, she's amazing. Didn't I tell you? She sees, she hears something totally different than the rest of us. The first time I heard her read poetry, it was like I was hit by a train. She's so simple, direct, and powerful. And she reads with so much emotion. The poetry just flows out of her. You don't even know it's a poem until she's halfway through it. I don't think she even understands her talent. Those are the best artists. She's the chosen one. She's been called to be the voice of Latin America. Juan, the view from your terrace is beautiful. Thank you. The sounds of the waves are so peaceful, and the moonlight, oh, I felt my skin burning in the moonlight. You know, being immersed in nature somehow assures me that somehow, somewhere, God exists. Sorry to disappoint you, but God doesn't exist. Be careful, Bosch. God is in people's lives, whether you like it or not. I'm sure the Communist Party would love to hear that. Pablo Neruda believes in God. <laughs> I didn't say I believed in God. I said that God is important in people's lives, or rather the idea of God. You know, I'm not sure what God means, but there's definitely something, some force out there. I'm certain it is not a misogynistic, patriarchal God that delights in punishing people. Now you're talking about the church. It's one thing to have corrupt government official oppress its own citizens, but it's another to have a church that supports these organizations. The last concern for the church are the people that they support. Well, I don't know why you're surprised by that, Juan. The church has always been complicit with governments and armies and rich feudal families. That's the oldest alliance in the world. That's what's happening in Puerto Rico. The government, the United States Army, the church, they're all against El Pueblo Puerto Riqueño. Nobody is fighting for the people. Nobody knows who to trust. Half the island supports the United States. We're colonized, we're divided, we're scared. That's unbelievable to me. What does the church do? Nothing. Doesn't that make you furious? Of course. I do what I can. Join organizations, write poems that document the oppression. We need to take a stand against the church. That is the only way we can make the world a better place. Well, we're writers, Juan. We can make our stands with the only weapons we have. Our thoughts, our stories, our feelings, our ideas, our pens. That's as powerful as any army. That's why you're here, living in exile. That's why we're all living in exile. That's not the point. I'm well aware of what our weapons are. I repeat, we need to take an active stand against the church. More people have been killed in the name of God than any other entity known to humanity. But you cannot blame God. God is not the church. My point. People's belief in God created the church. Ah, uh, no. Powerful men who want to own real estate and, how, and hold political office created the church. I agree with Julia. God has nothing to do with the church. Pablo, you should know better. I'm disappointed in you. Well, being a communist doesn't mean you don't have faith. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, you cannot listen to Pablo. He's nostalgic over Chile. I'm surprised nostalgia has softened you. Of course I miss Chile. Desperately. As I'm sure you miss Santo Domingo. Julia misses Puerto Rico. But one has to have faith, Juan. I have faith. I have faith in the revolutions all over the world. <laughs> you have faith in the spirit? Don't tell me you do. I do. I pray often. In a church? Sometimes. There's nobody in it. You don't want anyone to see you. I like the quiet. My prayers are clear. I used to do that at the university. It was so peaceful. But now I wonder if God hears prayers anymore. Faith, Julia. Look at the world, Pablo. There's too much unhappiness. Look how Spain was destroyed by its civil war. Now the war in Europe. How many people have died? 
so many people are starving, suffering, and nobody cares. It breaks my heart. God's not listening. So you don't have faith? I do. But faith in humanity and what we can do. I can live with that. I agree with you too, Juan. To a certain extent. I don't think we should tell people not to believe in God. <laughs> people are not going to stop believing in God because one person told them not to. And I do believe in faith. I'm a pantheist. I believe in the immense power of nature, and we can tap into that power to change our lives. Oh, Phil, excuse me for a second. I have an important phone call to make this happen. Let me go. I have friends from back home that like to oblige me with news. and disseminated, you never know who's going to be affected by it. I saw you read a poem last week. It was great. You saw me? At the university. Oh, I was reading something new. It was so rough. I was impressed with the one that began with I, 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 the Grifa Negra, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that I'm Grifa and pure black. Kinkiness in my hair, kefir in my lips, and my flat nose Mozambique. Um, and then it goes, I can't remember all of it, I'm just memorizing it now. Um, oh, yes. I, 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 my black race flees, and with the white runs to become brown, to become the race of the future, fraternity of America. It was very powerful. Stay with me all night. But if I may, I have a comment. Uh, of course. I'll take criticism from Pablo Neruda. This is not criticism. But you read the poem with too much anger the other night. Too much anger? One can never have too much anger. Anger doesn't belong in art. Oh, of course it does. Everything belongs in art. Anger, happiness, dreams, fear. But that's not true. Pablo. People of African descent are treated horribly all over the world. It makes me so angry, I have to write about it. That's good, Julia. But you must transform the anger. I'm not sure what you mean. Art should come from love, not hate. I have to be honest with you, I don't agree. You write such amazing political poetry. Didn't they come from anger? All of my poems come from love, even the political ones. Everything stems from love, love of self, love of land, love of culture, love of country. And people who love do not oppress or support tyranny. If you want something, someone, some political system to change, it's because of the love you have for a better world. So look, use the anger to write the poem. The anger comes from love, and you should read it with love. Don't hold on to the anger. Anger will destroy your talent, will make you bitter, and will destroy your soul. Don't ever let anger take over your heart. What if I'm surrounded by anger? So feel it, transform it, and release it. That's not so easy to do. It's almost impossible. You have no choice. That's what artists do. Are you working on anything new? Yes. I'm working on a new collection. It may become two separate collections. I'm thinking of the titles Campos or the CNU, oh, but it's not ready. We always think it's never ready. Uh, yeah. Would you allow me to read the poems? Of course, but they're rough. Julia, I've been fortunate in my life for many reasons, but to witness the birth of a new artist is exciting and liberating. You're inspiring me to go home and write. I would love to read some of your work. Thank you. It will be my pleasure. If you permit me, I'd like to write an introduction to the work. But you haven't even read my poems yet. I have faith in you, Julia. I 
I have faith in you too, Julia. 